there's a new cryptocurrency on the block and it's called IOTA. Well, technically it's not a new cryptocurrency. It's been around for a while, but recently it's been listed on Bitfinex and it's got a lot of attention and it has actually took you know, the seventh place uh, in terms of market capital in terms of cryptocurrency. So it instantly shot up to the top 10 and now everyone's interested in what it is. This video is gonna explain what is IOTA, the key features of IOTA, and some interesting things about how to trade at IOTA. So let's start off with what's interesting about IOTA. It's marketed as kind of the third generation cryptocurrency. Okay, that's actually a really, really huge claim, like the third generation cryptocurrency. And why I can offer that is that it's actually has a few key features, which is it has fast transactions, and more importantly, it has no fees. Okay, let's just think about that. It's got no fees for transactions, zero, zero fees. And lastly, it's actually quantum computing proof. So this is like a future proof cryptocurrency that has no fees, that has fast transactions, and that is, <laughs> I mean, what more can you ask, right? So IOTA is a full attempt at being a new cryptocurrency, and it's got one very, very important technological change and that's the fact that it doesn't use blockchain. All right, so let's sink in on that for a second. I mean, blockchain is a huge word, and a lot of cryptocurrencies are based on this technology, including Bitcoin, Ethereum, and they all create this kind of consensus ledger. Okay, let me explain that to you about that in kind of this diagram. IOTA uses something called Tango. It's not blockchain. And the easiest way to understand it, I mean, think about the easiest way to understand this, and I'm going to take you back to school. So back when in school, when you did homework, you give your homework to your teacher to mark, to assess. So the teacher would like take a look at your math homework and check every answer if it's correct or not. And that takes time and effort. So you can look at that as kind of the blockchain. So when you send a transaction, you send it to kind of a node and then it gets broadcast to kind of mining miners and they kind of verify that this transaction has taken place and they bundle it into a big database called the blockchain. So this is the equivalent of kind of giving your homework to your teacher and then your teacher giving you a grade and the grade gets stored permanently, something like that. Well, smarter teachers do one thing and if they don't want to do the work, if they don't want to do all that necessary work, what they do is they tell you to mark each other's homework. So you mark your friend's homework, and then you give each other a grade, and then they don't have to do any work. See, that's the beauty of Tangled. So this is kind of this explains Tangled. So every time a transaction is sent, you verify two other transactions behind you. Right, so instead of creating this kind of overall one block after another, kind of which is kind of what um, crypto, um, Bitcoin and Ethereum is doing, and it's requiring a lot of work. It's requiring actual proof of work, and that's why miners get paid. But with Tangle, you just verify each other's work. Right, you're like, hey, look, you're right, I'm right. Okay, I put, chunk it down and then toss it to someone else. So it's essentially that. It's essentially uh, removing the the miners or any form of state consensus out of the way. It's removing blockchain altogether and forming this kind of like network of transaction verifications. And that's beautiful. I mean, that's what the kind of the smart teacher would do in school. You know, get each to get the students to mark each other's work and then now you have plenty of time on your hands. And this is exactly what's cool about Tangled. And Tangled basically means that because you're verifying each other's work, and you're doing um, a calculation when you send the transaction, it means that it's fast. It also means it's free because you did the work already, because you did what was required and now Tangle can be free. So this is different from even Ripple. If you think of Ripple, Ripple has a transaction fee to prevent spam. So it has a very, very low transaction fee, but it's still there to prevent spam because you know the system still needs to check your work. And here you check your own work and now it can be completely free. So I also was completely designed to be a cryptocurrency. So it doesn't have safe um, advanced features like smart contracts or you know the ability to run dApps or create tokens. So aside from being a cryptocurrency, IOTA is marketed as something that the internet of things can use. 
and, and this is quite interesting to me because I'm a big Internet th um, of Things fan. You know, I have a smart light bulb. You guys can see that. This is a light bulb that I can switch on with my mobile phone and I can change its color. And I can actually program it to switch on at different times. And it has a little a microchip inside and it's heavy. Um, and it's got a Wi-Fi inside. It's got um, a Wi-Fi receiver. That's how it receives signals. So this is a smart, um, a smart lamp. I've also got a vacuum robot this is also a smart vacuum robot it takes commands from my mobile phone and i can schedule cleanups off my room so um we're definitely moving into a phase where internet of things is gonna be um huge and that's what's coming that's that's what's hot this year so this is the interesting part so not only can humans use iota but machines can use iota let's just think of that for a second so machines can now start trading with each other like how insane is that because transactions are free and because there's so many um iotas around machines can do utilize these micro transactions and start trading with each other and my mind is completely blown off about the implications of this and i'm not sure if i like it or not technically with IOTA, my vacuum robot can buy a drone and get moved from room to room, you know, or get get moved from, you know, building to building to start sweeping. You know, technically these machines can have an intelligence of their own and start, you know, communicating with other machines and paying them for various services. And I mean, this is just super futuristic stuff. This reminds me of the Terminator. This reminds me of the start of, you know, Skynet even. Uh, machines that think and can pay each other can and, and can do each um, task for each other and I can see why um, that's cool but I'm also kind of scared you know like if if machines can pay each other then they can pay each other to kill me you know like technically you know at night my, my light bulb might explode and cause a, cause a fire because some machine hated me right uh, so, uh, jo uh, joking aside, that uh, fun fun stuff aside, um, I still see it to be a very interesting um, inclusion into the Internet of Things network. I'm I'm still interested to see where, where it goes, and I'm definitely an early adopter for Internet of Things, and I'm actually quite excited to see how this can be included into these smart devices um, 10 to 12, 20 years down the road, or maybe even just five or two years down the road. This is just technology is moving so fast, and it's even outpacing at how fast I can think about it. I do want to say an interesting note is that IOTA is quantum proof as well. So if you guys heard about quantum computing and its potential threat to the Bitcoin network, well, right now with the Bitcoin network, um, it's possible maybe in the future when, when a big quantum computer is built that they can actually brute force a password and brute force into an account, into um, Bitcoin account and steal funds. So that might be, you know, possible 20, 30 years, but IOTA is completely quantum proof. So for Bitcoin to kind of adapt to the quantum threat, so it's called, they actually need a protocol upgrade and that's going to take, you know, some time and that might threaten the network. But IOTA, because it's generation three, it's actually got that pre-built inside already. It's actually quantum proof. So that's kind of interesting. There's also a fixed amount of IOTAs out there. So the total amount of the IOTA is just massive. I'm going to, it's listed here. I'm not, not even going to try to list that number out. Um, it's probably somewhere in the PETA, PETA range. So something very, very massive. I do want to note that I've been talking about this yesterday as well. Uh, because the amount is so large, because there's so many um, IOTA coins out there, the exchangers are listing it as a million. So they're actually listing it as a mega IOTA. Okay, myota, if you want to call it that. So when when people say you know an iota is worth you know fifty four cents, that's actually a mega. That's actually a million iotas are worth um, fifty four cents. So you guys really need to keep that into account when you're looking at things. And they made this adjustment as well. So right now, when you look at the market cap, they actually adjusted it in terms of mega iota. And this is something that's um, a few people pointed out on Reddit as well that, you know, um, if you get sent one iota, don't pay 50 cents for it. You got, you got to have a million first. And all the exchanges use mega iotas as a default currency. So they're not telling you that they're listing this as M iota, but this is actually the case. And even on CoinMarketCap and on Bitfinex, they're actually listing it as 
and what they're using, what they're calling IOTA is mega IOTA. So it's a million IOTA units. So don't go on an open market, you know, and buy, you know, a thousand IOTA for, you know, 50 cents a piece because you're going to get ripped off. You know, like that's, you're going to have, you have to have millions for it to be worth something. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. It is a very, very fast summary of the key points. I'm definitely going to talk more about the Tango algorithm. I do want to ask if you guys have any questions you want to ask about IOTA and your thoughts about it. This is some really, really breakthrough technology. And I'm interested to see where it goes. I hope, you know, it can go somewhere because right now we have Bitcoin, we have Ethereum, but nothing that's really generation three, nothing that's really using the Tango algorithm. But that said, of course, to actually you know, directly implement this and to actually um, reach this kind of critical mass either through um, kind of uh, Internet of Things or for different people using it. That's going to be a huge, huge challenge in the years ahead. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you guys like other videos about crypto, various cryptocurrencies or cryptocurrency news, do remember to subscribe to my channel because I make tons of that. Yes, thank you so much for watching. See you next time.